Oh, do you like 40K, but you're bored of it? You're tired of painting Space Marines again for the 40th time. Well, do I got a sub hobby for you? Hey guys, uh, Diesel here. Welcome to Mana Potion Tabletop. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm your host for today, but today we're looking at Gunpla, which is a sub hobby I think you should pick up if you enjoy painting little army men. Uh, so if you're worried about whether or not you should know anything about the world of Gundam before getting into it, uh, don't, because my experience goes as far as playing this PS2 game, and, and that's it. All units, watch out for that white one. You really don't need to know anything about the world to enjoy doing this, um, but I, I'm sure it helps for some people. I'm just like not in an anime mood and haven't been for like the last few months. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, do I consider building historicals or not? And doing that stuff, and I figured no. I want something complicated, but something a little different, and, and this kind of fit that bill. So, uh, what's, a, what's a little primer for this? What are Gundam? What, a, what is this thing that I have in my hands, That this big box? Well, Gundam are part of a thing known as real robots. Real robots are different from like the Voltrons, Mazinger Z type robots. Uh, real robots take place in worlds where there's political intrigue, there's war, there's big conversations about what these things mean. And then the super robot genre, you kind of got like robots like Mazinger Z or, you know, basically a guy pilots a thing and fights a robot or a monster or anything in between. You know, obviously it gets more complicated than that. You know, stuff like Evangelion, you know, kind of fits in between, you know, but don't worry if you do want to build Evangelion, they got models for that. So that way you can live out the dream of being a 20 something who won't pilot a robot and has unhealthy relationships with women. All right, so why, why should I even bother picking this stuff up? Um, the prices here are actually pretty reasonable for the size of these things. Um, I know it says that this is uh, a $40 model kit, right? And then that this one is a $30 model kit. However, if you go to hobby stores, these things regularly go on sale. Uh, in particular, Hobby Lobby counts these as, as uh, display models, so you can get them for real cheap. Just grit your teeth. Um, because I understand a lot of people have strong opinions on that store. I don't like it either, but it's the only one open around here. You know, you could build Legos, but the complexity isn't there, and there's a lot of complexity and articulation in these guys that makes them interesting, very poseable, very dynamic, and very beautiful to look at, and I think that's something that's really awesome about these. Uh, you know, when you look at what's inside of this, uh, there's a lot of care put into it. Um, so I'm gonna open this up and, and we'll take a look at what's inside. Um, so there's also other things that we can pay attention with this. That's like the uh, grade system on Gunpla, but I, 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 let's not get into that. Just pick up one that looks nice. All right, so if you hated how much waste you made with your miniatures and in, in your GW boxes, get ready to make a lot more waste. <laughs> They have introduced recycles, uh, recycle programs for these things, but uh, that's not what we're looking at today. We're looking at what's inside these things. All right, so this is just an example, but what you're looking at is called a runner. So a runner and a sprue are very similar. They're actually just both sprues. In miniature wargaming, we call sprues, but I see a lot of the time people in this hobby call them runners. So what's interesting about these is that they're numbered out very well. For example, on a GW model kit, you might have like numbers four and number 10 next to each other, but then you're not gonna have things like number three on the same board. Here, whenever you open up an instruction booklet, it tells you which runner it's on. So you got E1, and then you know which number it is, three. And you only need to go down numerically, you know, the way a person would normally read numbers. So it's never hard to find pieces on your Gunpla runners. You're not gonna get confused looking at the instruction manual. The instructions are really clear compared to GW models. Uh, I, I know some people might feel differently about that, but it gets to the point where if you've built enough of these, you could really understand exactly what you're doing at every single moment and not have to slow down. Uh, there are people who do like ASMR cutting from the runner and that's 
awesome. And the only reason you're able to do that is because the instructions are so well done. Um, so that's, that's really great. So you only get one model in a kit, but um, I'll, I'll show you what a high grade looks like, right? So different grades have different articulation or different parts. Some have metal parts in them. Some of them have higher grade plastics in them. Some of them are built better, right? So high grade is the one that I, is most voluminous. There's the most amount of those. So this guy, this is Char Zaku. This is from uh, the, the original series. Uh, as far as I know, I can't wait for somebody to tell me I'm wrong. Um, so there's a lot of high grades and you can definitely do your entire hobby career in Gunpla with just doing high grades. They're beautiful, they're articulated. This is my first real grade kit and I am not ready to move up to it yet. I don't, I don't feel confident in building it. And I've built some with wings and the wings are very fiddly, so I've never tried it before, but I'm looking to move up to a real grade. And the great thing about Gunpla as a hobby is that it can be as, as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be. If you just wanna do something to pass the time in between doing a hobby project for your miniature war game, this stuff is great because you know exactly what it is that you're getting into the second you pick up the box. You also probably already have the tools. So I didn't need to pick up anything for this. I did pick up stuff and I'll get into that, uh, but I could use my nippers just fine with it. Uh, there are specific nippers and there's a lot of tools specific to Gunpla that are really popular in that genre of hobbying. Uh, it can be as expensive as you want. There are nippers that are like 60 bucks and um, I'm sure they're great. I want to pick up a pair, but I'm broke. So we don't do that here. Anyway, these work just as fine. And then when you cut off a piece, you might have a little bit there. And this would probably be one of the only tools I'd say you need to get is a glass file. This stuff is amazing and I enjoy using it. It's very satisfying, but it's basically just a little file and it helps sand everything down. Everything here that I have is high grade except for one and you can probably tell looking at it. Um, so I will point it out to you. It is this guy right here. So this guy is an exclusive from Target that I picked up for eight dollars. Um, he is an American themed RX-78 or something. Um, this is like the Gundam, the main Gundam, the, the guy, right? Um, and I, I think this one looks horrible, by the way. But I just love how it looks at the same time. It's as garish as an American would make a Gundam. It is, it is just covered in American Americanness. There is a eagle on it. There are stars. There's a red, white, and blue on it. The entire thing is red, white, and blue. And this is an entry grade, so a lot of entry grades don't require tools. So I built this while I was away on vacation and um, I built him without any tools. I didn't use a nipper or anything. I just used my hands. Um, the articulation is okay on this guy. Um, you're not gonna get anything amazing, but you can definitely enjoy posing him for whatever diorama you build. Um, you know, maybe, maybe something the boys inspired I think would be a very cool diorama to do around this. That might be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, this guy is a high grade. So this is from the Gundam Breakers line because uh, people who kit bash Gunpla, uh, they, they've worked it into the lore. It's in uh, anime, it's in one of the animes. So this is like a Gundam from that show. And the parts in this are made to transfer over with other ones from the Breaker line very easily, at least from what I've read. Um, I might be wrong on that, and if you're a Gunpla Pro, please correct me or, or tell me if I'm wrong. I'm fine with that. Um, but I really, really enjoy how this guy looks. Um, I, I, I'm not like a super fan of all these like pointy bits on Gunpla, so I like the ones that look a little bit more real. Uh, but this guy, I, I got a hard soft spot for, you know, I, I just like the red and the white on him. There is a bunch of Gunpla markers and Gunpla specific tools. The one that I would say you should definitely try out is this fine tip pen. If you're just looking to keep it nice and simple, you can pick one up for a few bucks. Um, if you want to get a little more complicated, then I would say move on to the things you would use on your models on your GW models, on your little army guys. What are you using on there to make them look weathered and battle tired? Try using that on a Gundam. Try seeing what it would look like if you did that. The point of it is, is that if you pick this up as a side hobby, don't 
make it complicated. You can make it as complicated as you want, and I've definitely started to make it more complicated because I enjoy doing it, um, and I think you'll enjoy doing it too. But what I see is that you can just put something together. It looks really nice at the end of the day. Even if you don't do any panel lining or any of that stuff, you just give it a matte varnish, it's already gonna look great. You know, so it, it's gonna be a, a, a good, fun build. And um, you know, sometimes you just wanna have your inner child and go like pew 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 with your little robot man. So there's a lot there. Anyway, make sure to subscribe to Man and Potion Tabletop. We got plenty of stuff coming out soon. I'm super excited to be doing this channel um, and doing something that I uh, enjoy. So uh, take care, subscribe, and uh, welcome. <laughs>